Hey, Back who's your uh, offensive MVP for the Jags? Mm, no, you know, not named Trevor Lawrence. Originally, when you asked this question, I was thinking Travis Etienne was the answer, mm-hmm. but I think I'm going Evan Ingram on this one. Ah, that's that's wow. That's uh, it's like every single time good. the Jags need a first down, Evan Ingram is there to give it to him. I like both your responses, which means uh, means Casey's going to go with Etienne. Can't. I already said his name. No, that's not how that works. You got to figure it out now. No, I, I, I can't. Travis oh, he can't figure it out. It is hard. I will say that it's hard to get past ETN. Is ETN more more valuable right now than Trevor? No. No. But I couldn't pick Trevor. No, I know. I was just asking. I wanted to see what level of ETN. No, you were Trevor, at. They, they, they wouldn't be that good without Trevor. Um, but I think that's. I thought you. Were, I thought you were going to say like Walker Little. So here's the thing. <laughs> Until it, he got hurt, you might have. It popped into my head, but then I was like, "But the dude basically just got benched." Is I what know. just happened. Not so only benched, but he's guy? also been missing for some games. You'd have to say Brandon Sheriff before you say Walker Little. Uh, I'm not saying that. Uh, Anton yeah, Harrison. It's really hard to get outside of Ingram. If you're picking an old lineman, I agree with you on Ingram. By the way, 51 catches, guys. 51 catches. It's insane. That's and then his nuts. yak is first in the league for tight ends. His yak's very good. What's interesting is his yards per catch is not, but it doesn't seem to matter because we know, like you said, how big the third and fours, the third and fives, the the checkdowns to get into good situations have been. I mean, if you've been watching the Jags game, which I'm assuming if you're listening, you have been watching the Jags games, you know the you're not stuck on the yards per catch because you know what Aaron said. The value of Ingram has been there. And I'll also say this. It's, knock on wood, almost automatic. 51 out of 61 targets. It's wild. And, and that's not like drop passes. That might just mean an errant pass or deflected pass or whatever else. So 61 times Trevor's tried to throw it to him, and 51 times it's in the hands of Evan Ingram. He did have the fumble the other day, but outside of the fumble, you can't find anything wrong with him. So now he had this amazing career year last year, and he's on pace to do it again. Let's say he keeps up the pace at the end of the year. I bet you he's still not considered one of the top three tight ends in the league. I just saw an article that we put out through ESPN 690, which was probably – through ESPN really is where it came, but they had the top five tight ends and he wasn't on it. He wasn't on it because they had a Kittle at number two. They had uh Hawkinson at number three. I think he's, I mean, he's fine, but these guys are all good. Uh, Goddard was number five and I forget who was. Oh, oh, Andrews was number four. Listen, all good players. Sure. But right. What I wanted to say is, you know what? Travis Kelsey is a separator in my opinion. Kelsey's just different, but outside of that, I'll take Evan Ingram. Like, for this football team, no problem with Evan Ingram. You can have all those guys, and they're very good players. But I'm not trying to replace Evan Ingram with any of those guys. Are you guys? Outside no. of Kelsey. I mean, Kelsey's a different animal. I think you'd be out but of your Kelsey's mind Kelsey's also to say, 34. So, like, of course he's, like, one of the best offensive tight ends in the history of the game. But if you're talking about building with your franchise, I'd rather Ingram for five years than Kelsey for one or two. Yeah, I get it. But I'm just saying right now. I mean, it's hard. Everybody would say Kelsey, mm. right? Um but outside of that, I'm not sure I would say Kittle. Like, I don't. I wouldn't say Kittle. Do you want Kittle right now? I think Andrews is a debate because he's just as offensively Andrews. good. Uh, but outside of that, like, I'm not taking Hawkinson over Ingram. The one thing about those guys is they they are like combo guys, Kittle and and Hawkinson, especially from a blocking receiving standpoint. Mm-hmm. And and the deal with Ingram is Ingram's just different build than those guys. But he's a willing blocker, and he's gotten better at blocking good over at his career. You know what else? If you look back at Ingram's numbers, I think he got a little bit mislabeled in New York. He had some pretty good numbers in New York. Now Outside he dropped his passes. Year? Yeah, he still had some decent numbers. He was tracking toward good numbers even when he like got hurt. I think in year two it was, or maybe it was year three and missed some games. I think it might have been both those years. But his numbers were not like terrible. And, but he dropped passes, so he got labeled. They weren't very good, all those things. He clearly is playing much better, more consistently now, and obviously in a much happier place for him. But it's not like this guy was bad in New York. I think that's a little bit of a misrepresentation that he was bad. He's got some good overall career numbers, quite frankly. So in his second year, he was pacing to have, I think, uh, high 60s, low 70s receptions. Damn near close to like eight or 900 yards. It was 11 games, 45 catches, 577. But that second year you were talking about where he gets into eight games, he's got 44 catches in eight games. So pacing out to almost 90 receptions that year. It was almost like this kind of pace. Then he plays 16 games the following year for 63 catches, 15 games the following year for 46 catches, 
And that was all she wrote for Evan Ingram in New York. And listen, he was a first round draft pick. So he came with all these expectations. But the bottom line, this is another lesson in, hey, you know what? You can label him all you want. He's a damn good player. He's great. He's great. And beyond his talent on the field, an amazing locker room guy. Oh, yeah. And a guy that's never going to that ruin stuff. your team. He's never going to me first you. He's never going to tell you no on an assignment. An amazing teammate. Let me uh, let me tell you this, too, okay? Uh, Kelsey has 54 catches for a bunch of yards. He's averaging like 10.8 a catch. Uh, he also has four touchdowns. Missed a game, right? And he did. He missed the opener. You're right. Uh, Hawkinson, 53 catches. He's got three touchdowns, uh, nine to catch. Ingram has 51 catches. The next guy is Laporta at 43. And the next guy after that is Waller at 36, and he's going to miss some time now. Yeah, at least two I weeks. mean, the top three guys have actually separated themselves. And I think you could put Laporta in here because he's got four touchdowns. You know what's crazy? Mark Andrews actually has six touchdowns, but he's only got 32 receptions. He is Lamar's red zone blanket, security blanket. Like, it's almost as if he's not doing anything else this year except for red zone work exclusively with this team. That's a Todd Munkin thing, I think. Will Ingram make the Pro Bowl at this pace? And I, I look at it, and I'm like, oof, it's kind of hard. You got Kelsey. You got Mark Andrews. They come with reputation to begin with. I guess he would be the third guy on that list, and one of those teams could make the Super Bowl. Oh, between – I mean, right now in the AFC, if you were saying Jacksonville, Baltimore, Kansas City, or the field, I think most people would take one of those three to be in the Super Bowl. Yeah, the I think so too. Um so, and, yeah, I guess he is tracking a bit toward a Pro Bowl. The thing, he's a, he's gotta a get pro him bowler touchdowns, man. Get him some touchdowns. He is not an alter. He's a Pro Bowler in the AFC. How many, how many tight ends make him? Just two? Or is it three? Well, they don't play football anymore, so I don't know if more than yeah, one. I don't, I don't know. We'll get the nod. I don't watch the Pro Bowl. But, I mean, he's playing at a Pro Bowl level. I do think they need touchdowns because you take some of those guys that we mentioned, they've got six and four and three touchdowns. It'd be nice to have a. Even just get to four or five touchdowns this year in the second half would be very good. Similar issue as as Trevor. Trevor's got a lot of good things happening, but he's only got nine touchdowns. Yeah. Uh, let's go have the same conversation about ETN. ETN is third in the league right now in rushing. He's like six yards behind Zach Moss. Now, Moss missed a game, maybe even two, but he missed one. He's going to pass Moss because Jonathan Taylor is now back. Now, Steichen is talking about how Moss is keeping Taylor from getting carries at this point. Like, they're feeding Moss. So maybe that happens by the end of the year, but I don't think it's a, like, soon thing. Hmm. And then there's McCaffrey. Yeah. But from the AFC standpoint, I mean, ETN's going to be a top back if he stays on this pace. And the thing about ETN is he does have touchdowns. Touchdowns. He's got seven of them. Like, that's a big thing, though. And a receiving touchdown, so eight total in eight games. I do think that Henry and Mostert get uh, the nod before he does. Uh, yeah, Mostert has a ton of touchdowns, doesn't he? And he has a ton of catches and a decent rushing average. And I think Henry gets in on pedigree. Eh. Like he's having a good season, and that alone will put his name in. Is he? He is. Gosh, it's quiet. Henry's uh, rushed for 526 yeah, yards. That's good for what? Uh, fifth in the league right now, 4.4 average. ETN has 14 more touches than anybody else. Now, Henry's only played seven games, because and he'll play his eighth tonight. Uh, and he has... ETN's just like 60 yards ahead of him. ETN's yards per carry is not great. It's only 3.9. And I honestly, and and this is nothing against Travis ETN, I just don't see him in the top three or maybe even five at rushing yards at the end of this season. Really? Yeah. Now, I do see that I, I, I believe his receptions will keep up. I believe his touchdown pace will probably keep up. The dude is doing unbelievable work. Yeah, he also has. You can't uh, keep feeding him the ball 30 times a game. Receiving wise, he's got um, 266. So his scrimmage yards, he's projected to have 1708 rushing and 582 catching. That He'd would be, be Doug Peterson. Yards. Doug Peterson with the crystal ball <laughs> yes, on 1700 yards, by the way. 1700 yards. I mean, he's projected to have 15 touchdowns, too. <laughs> yeah, like those numbers get you into <laughs> the Pro Bowl. Yeah, that's not going to happen, probably. Probably not. It gets an insane pace he's on. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. No, he's having a monster year. You know what's funny, guys? I don't necessarily feel like he's overused right now, even though he leads the league in touchdowns, uh, touches. Do you guys feel like he's overused? Not in the team scheme. 
But when you look at his touches compared to the rest of the league and you look at, you know, his shape, his body, he's not a Derrick Henry bruiser. So you kind of wonder how long you can ride that horse before it ends up getting hurt. Casey, can you ride him? I think it's dangerous. Here's his carries, guys. 24, 14, 18, 26, 20, 19, 12, 18. It's not terrible. Like, that's really not bad. He's been over 20 touches on a running the ball three times, 20 or more. Now he is receiving. He's 3, 3, 3, 4, 3, 4, 2, 5. See, he, they're making me happy. They're getting him more involved in the passing game, which I wanted more of last year. I think the touches are a little overblown right now in Jacksonville. I think this is a nice pace for him to be on, especially with well-rested over this last few-week period with one game and a 23-day stretch. Yeah, We'll see. See if he can. He looks like he can handle it. And you got to get rid of that label in your mind of he's not big enough to handle it. Guess what? He's been big enough to handle it the last eight, 18 months. Last Doesn't year that and make a half? you a little worried that it's going to wear down a little bit? I mean, I just haven't seen it, so no. I mean, I don't. Until you see it, I, I'm That's not fair. worried about it. Okay. We'll be back. Brent and Friends on ESPN 690.